The coronavirus continues to spread globally, including in Italy, where confirmed cases have skyrocketed. That has local residents concerned. We visited workers of a Robinsdale restaurant who have family members in Italy. My parents are back in Italy at home. So my dad's Italian, my mom's American. She studied abroad in Italy and never came back. One of those stories. Nico Bunani came to the U.S. eight years ago and now works at Nona Rosa's Italian restaurant in Robbinsdale. I am from northern Italy in a town called Vignale Monferrato. It's northwest of Italy. Although the coronavirus hit the northeast part of Italy, including Milan and Venice, Bonani says his hometown southwest of there was still affected by closed schools and businesses. The large carnival in Venice was also canceled due to the virus. So like as Tina said, it's like canceling the Super Bowl in Italy. So far, the death toll in Italy is at seven, and there's about 230 confirmed cases, making it the worst hit country in Europe. If the numbers go way up next week, I'll be really concerned for my parents and being like, hey, what are we going to, you guys want to come over here? Are they going to let you go? But it's still really early in the stages. Bonani says family members in Italy are taking precautions, but they aren't feeling widespread panic. My mother is actually pretty She's not too nervous about it yet. Um, she said, yep, I went this morning to the village to get the, go to get groceries, normal thing. Nobody's wearing masks. We don't want people to panic. Tina Sulia, co-owner of Nona Rosa, says she's concerned the virus will spread to the south, where her family is from. But if it continues to travel through the central part of Italy and eventually to the south of Italy, now you're kind of um, crossing economic lines where there may not be uh, as capable of fending it off. While Sulia and others continue to monitor the situation, Sulia says she's grateful for the community at Nona Rosa's. And, and you know, we're just kind of there for each other and offering some support while we're plating up pastas and, you know, pouring glasses of wine, so. The Minnesota Department of Health says to protect yourself from coronavirus, take the same precautions as you would for avoiding colds and the flu. Youth tobacco consumption continues to rise in Minnesota due to e-cigarettes. That has Golden Valley looking at ways to further restrict tobacco sales. Monday night, the Golden Valley Planning Commission looked at ways to do that. City staff members had recommended a scenario that would create a 750-foot buffer around any school, playground, and athletic field, essentially preventing a tobacco retailer from locating within that buffer zone. After a lengthy discussion, the Planning Commission couldn't come to a consensus census and decided to table the issue. I just think we should take a pause, get some direction on how the city feels about a myriad of health issues, and then go down that path and see where that takes us. According to the Minnesota Department of Health, one in five high school students use e-cigarettes. That's a nearly 50 percent increase since 2014. Osseo continues to work toward rehabbing its crumbling streetscape. Monday night, the City Council looked at options for replacing the streetscape in front of City Hall. The current look is marred because materials are breaking down earlier than expected. The Council ended up le leaning toward a more colorful option that would contrast the sidewalk against the street, but only if it'll last. If we can assure some sort of I don't want to do this again in five, yeah, ten years. Exactly. That's. The, I mean, if it's going to be an issue, then. But I mean, if the strength and durability is similar, then. City staff will take council input and use it to make a final proposal, which they'll bring to the council later this year. The late February thaw has people thinking spring, but some folks are still ice fishing, which raises the question, how safe is it on area lakes? Eric Nelson spent the day looking for that answer. We're out here on Medicine Lake, where in a few days the fish houses have to come off the ice. And despite the recent balmy weather, the ice is still thick. Joe Hardy's auger did a deep drill Tuesday. Finally hitting water at the 22 inch mark. Can still go out and fish. It's been a yo yo winter for Hardy's ice fishing business because of frequent temperature fluctuations. It turned out pretty good. Could have been much worse. All those warm ups that we had, that doesn't help. 
but it's still a darn good layer of ice out there. The same can't be said for local rinks. This skating spot in Crystal is chock full of rough patches. After a few days of going through a freeze-thaw cycle, skating here is not an option. Of course, with March just days away, Hardy wants to make sure no one gets fooled by ice depth. It's crucial. People don't assume that lake ice is safe. It's getting to the point now again where it's like early ice. Have your picks around your neck, have uh, cleats on your boots. The diehards that go late, you better bring a life jacket. You never know. Now, there are more than trucks and houses here on the lake. As you can see behind me, somebody's getting ready for the upcoming biking season. On Medicine Lake, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Bicyclists and runners will have something to look forward to in the coming years, a new regional trail connection in Golden Valley. Planners are looking to extend the Bassett Creek Regional Trail by one mile from Regent Avenue East to Theodore Worth Park. It would connect with the Ground Rounds Trail. The 10-foot wide trail would run along the south side of Golden Valley Road. Most of what we're uh, intending to do is use public right-of-way and so that's part of our design process right now is looking to see um, can we fit the trail within the existing road right-of-way which means we have to pull some curbs in and look at different lane configurations and generally speaking we can do that. <laughs> The project is a partnership between the Three Rivers Park District, the City of Golden Valley, and Hennepin County. Construction could start in 2023. The Armstrong Cooper Boys Hockey Program is in its first season in Class A. Playing a mostly double-A schedule in the Northwest Suburban Conference, the Wings have had some ups and downs. They played for a spot in the Section 2A final when they faced top seed Orono in the semifinals. Second period, Delano can't clear their zone. Joe Campion shot from just inside the blue line, finds the back of the Spartans net, and that makes it 2-0 Wings. Later in the second on a power play, Joe Potter's shot from the point, tipped in by number seven, Matt Campion. And the wings are fired up. Armstrong Cooper is up 3-0 on Orno after two periods. AC goalie Owen Reeve is solid between the pipes. He stops all 18 shots that come his way in the game. And the wings add an empty net goal late in the third period. No, Weiss John to Ben Anderson who scores. Armstrong Cooper beats Orno for a second time this season. The wings move into Thursday's Section 2A final. Breck is the third seed in Section 2A. The Mustangs faced number two seed Delano in the semifinals. The Mustangs trying to flip the score on the Tigers after losing to them back in November. But Delano gets on the board just 1-14 into the game. Michael Weber scores. It's 1-0 Tigers. Breck answers, though, a long shot by Ty Hogan to flex off of Delano sticking into their net for a goal. to 1-1 game after a period. But Delano strikes early in the second period. The shot, the point stopped, and the Tigers keep whacking at it. Finally, number 11, Jesse Peterson knocks it in. Tigers back in front, 2-1. to one. They'd add another to lead 3-1 through 2. Just over a minute into the third period, John Blake, great pass. Caden Morgan scores. Mustangs back to within a goal of 3-2. to two. But they get no closer than that. Adam Brown skates out from the boards and scores a power play goal to make it 4-2. That's the final. Goats Delano and Armstrong Cooper with the section title Thursday at 7 o'clock at the St. Louis Park Rec Center. In boys basketball Monday, Maple Grove was looking for a season sweep of Champlin Park and a perfect record in the Northwest Suburban Conference's North Division. The Rebels 16 and 8 overall coming in, the Crimson at 20 and 4. Francis Wacorio, the nice spin move on the baseline, lays in two. He scores the Rebels' first eight points of the game. Rashawn Parker has a good first half shooting the ball, hitting for three of his 10 first half points here, 17 total in the game for the senior. John Hawkinson finds Henry Fonbelay cutting down the lane. He lays in two of his 10 points, helping Maple Grove build a 31-22 lead at halftime. Second half, Ethan Renz of Champlin Park takes the pass off the inbounds and hits a three-pointer. Rebels, though, still trail by eight. 
Lavelle Williams had a big second half. He hits for three of his 23 points, 18 of them coming in the second half, extending Maple Grove's lead to 12. But the Rebels closed the gap late. Well, Corey on the lane powers in for two more of his 22 points, plus a foul, and it's a four-point game. Maple Grove, though, holds its lead throughout the second half. Parker from Williams for two more. Maple Grove wins 69-61. They finish 12-0 in the Northwest Suburban Conference North. The girls' basketball playoffs begin Wednesday in some sections, including 6-4A, where Hopkins is a top seed. On this week's Sports Jam show on CCX, we feature Royals All-State guard Paige Beckers. Here's part of what you'll see. Everybody besides our fans wants to see us lose, and I really like that. I like having the target on my back, and it makes, it makes for a fun game and a fun atmosphere, and I just like proving people wrong. Paige is in her fifth season of varsity basketball and is Hopkins' all-time leading scorer. And here scores and won. The likely finish just shy of 3,000 career points. She's averaging over 21 points a game, but more important to her is that her assist totals for this season are close to 10 per game. You can watch the rest of the Paige Becker story and more this week on Sports Jam. Watch it on CCX1 or online at ccxmedia.com dot org.